Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about amine synthesis, but I'm mostly going to talk to you about what doesn't work, or what doesn't work as well as you would like it, uh, for amine synthesis. We're going to talk about alkylation reactions specifically. Uh, this is the first video of mine in a sequence of videos on amine synthesis and reactions, and in the upcoming videos you'll learn the ways around the, the issues with this uh, particular approach. Right. And so, by this point, you might know that ammonia and, and, and correspondingly the amines are pretty good nucleophiles. They, they have a lone pair here. Nitrogen can, can donate that lone pair to form a new covalent bond. And so you might expect to be able to synthesize an amine like this one a simple primary amine through a pretty straightforward nucleophilic substitution reaction starting with an alkyl halide. Okay. And the reaction conditions might look like this. We're going to use ammonia as our reagent. And we get one butanamine as the product. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know that this reaction actually works just fine. Um, uh, ammonia reacts with one chlorobutane in an SN2 type reaction because ammonia is a neutral nucleophile. The initial product that forms is protonated, and we need to remove that extra proton to make a neutral product. Fortunately, ammonia is also basic and can do this as well. And you know, so, on the surface, this works. The problem is Alkyl groups are electron donating, and this product is a better nucleophile than ammonia. And now we have a problem. Okay. So let's deal with, or uh, let's let's explore the the outcomes of this problem. Okay. So, if one butanamine is a better nucleophile than ammonia, as it forms, it's going to compete with ammonia to react with one chlorobutane. And eventually, we will get dibutylamine. But wait! Dibutylamine is more reactive still, and so it is very difficult to stop amine alkylation at a specific spot. Now, I can imagine that industrially, this thing is done in the way that I am presenting here, because we might actually want all of these things. We might want butylamine and dibutylamine and tributylamine. And they can be separated by distillation or other means, and they're all valuable products. And so we just mix the things together. We get a, st uh, a statistical ratio of outcomes, and, and we're, we're okay with that because we can separate them. In the lab, we we're working on smaller scales, perhaps with more valuable substrates, and we need, uh, we need a, a little bit more control over what we're doing. But I'm not done because... Three alkyl groups is a, still makes a better nucleophile than two. And tributylamine is still reactive as a nucleophile and can continue to react with equivalents of chlorobutane if they're there. And we continue to have substitution reactions and we end up 
I'm going to put the positive charge on my nitrogen now. We end up with a quaternary ammonium salt, like this, tetrabutyl ammonium. And you know, in this case, the, the leaving group of chloride is counter ion. This is kind of counterproductive. Now, you might want this. These compounds that look like this make good phase transfer catalysts. They're emulsifying agents. You might want them. But if you want anything other than, than this, or if you want an amine that's got, you know, different groups, like more than one type of, of, of hydrocarbon group on the nitrogen, this strategy is not going to work very well. Uh, all the other strategies for synthesizing amines start by synthesizing another functional group that can be converted into an amine. And so in the upcoming videos, you're going to learn about the Gabriel amine synthesis, which uh, does an SN2 reaction on an alkyl halide, but there's only one nucleophilic equivalent. The product is m not nucleophilic. And so... Um, you know, we can stop after a single substitution. And then you're going to learn about the, the conversion of other functional groups to amines by reduction reactions. There are numerous uh, functional groups that can be converted to amines by reductions. This behavior of amines is a little bit like the behavior of thiols and sulfides, which continue to be really nucleophilic even after they've been alkylated once. And so ultimately, the methods we use to synthesize amines need to require avoiding that behavior um, and starting with other functional groups that can be converted. And those will come up in the upcoming videos, as I've said. Thank you for watching.